Welcome to Jenny's Paleontology Lesson and welcome to another video. So in this video, we're going to be continuing the topic of our last video and talk more about trilobites. So more specifically, I'll be talking about two new species of trilobites that I haven't talked about before in this video. Please look forward to that and let's get started! Paranopsis belongs in the Agnostheter quarter and are the smallest trilobites um, in the entire phylum of Trilobita. They range in size from about one millimeter to about 10 millimeters. And they existed exclusively during the Middle Cambrian. And the Cambrian period is the first period within the Paleozoic era that lasted from about 541 million years ago to 485 million years ago, preceding the Ordovician. They most likely were benthic feeders or scavengers um, on the seafloor scavenging for food. And this is because of their small sizes. And if you have studied water columns or different layers of water within um, a body of water before, the, the term benthic may sound very familiar to you. And that's because the benthic layer is usually referring to the bottom layer interacting with the bottom of the lake or the river or the sea or whatever body of water that we're discussing. Medosha thrived in a marine environment and the order that the genus of Medosha belongs to is Pycoporida, which is one of the largest and most diverse order um, of trilobites containing a sheer diversity of different types of trilobites, including some of the most primitive species that we've ever seen. Um, this order in particular thrived from the lower Cambrian to the Ordovician. The large heterogeneous order makes it very hard for us to make a very encompassing diagnosis of the anatomy of these trilobites. However, what we do know so far, starting from the front of the exoskeleton, is that in their cephalons, they usually have opus thorparian facial sutures along with a more rounded shape. Um, and in the middle section, they usually have about eight um, thoracic segments uh, along with the pygidium, um, which the shape could be quite varied, but is usually quite small. Now, even trilobites within the same species, like Aurethia kingji, can have varying sizes. So I want you to take a guess. What do you think is the largest trilobite ever found and how long was it? The biggest trilobite ever found is Isotelus rex. It has a length of roughly 27 inches and dates to around 455 years old. Now compare that with, say, Paranopsis from the Agnostida order, which can have a length under one millimeter. Did you know that trilobites actually derive their name trilobites from a very trilobic body structure. Well, um, even though all trilobites vary a lot in size and shape, even within the same species and have very distinctive features that are very exclusive to a certain species, um, they actually share a very similar body plan. So from the interior to the posterior side, we have the cephalon, a segmented thorax, and finally a pygidium. And from the left lateral side to the right lateral side, we have a left pleural lobe, we have a central axial lobe, and we also have a right pleural lobe. So you can see that trilobites are actually trilobic in both from the anterior to the posterior side and from the left to the right lateral side. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, what did you guys think about trilobites? Was there a favorite prehistoric creature that you had growing up? Please leave something in the discussion section within my channel page so I can see and I can read about them. And um, in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, stay indoors. Best of luck to everyone. And please look forward to future videos where I'm gonna talk about trilobites or other prehistoric creatures that captivated me as I was growing up. Um, see you guys.